Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. In this phony debate over the obscure concept of critical race theory, if it caught you off guard and unaware, you are not alone. But it is apparently part of a Republican political strategy to make race, or more precisely, the denial of American racism, a central and winning political issue for Republicans. We can go through how Republicans are using a faux campaign against critical race theory to prevent the accurate teaching of history, or how it is unmistakable that America is a racist country, and that does not require most individual Americans to be consciously racist, and how defund the police is a completely logical proposal that in most cases is not about abolition of the police force, but the reallocation of funds from police to social services. But there is no use, and it will go to no end, because this is not a debate about facts. This is a debate about narrative. This is a lost cause redo. When the South, the South lost the Civil War, revisionists there invented the propaganda narrative of the lost cause, positing that the fight had been honorable and righteous and not about maintaining slavery, but maintaining a superior way of life. In that narrative, slavery had been a good thing and the enslaved were treated relatively well and many were happy workers. As Cy uh, Dueli, Professor Emeritus of History at West Point wrote in Robert E. Lee and Me, a Southerner's reckoning with the myth of the lost cause, the lost cause created a flawed memory of the Civil War, a lie that formed the ideological foundation for white supremacy and Jim Crow laws, which used violent terror and de jure segregation to enforce racial control. We are in the midst of another lost cause moment. Conservatives in this country lost a battle in the racial war after the publication of the 1619 Project by the New York Times and after the historic protest that engulfed the country and the world in the wake of the murder of George Floyd. I'm not sure that I would call it a racial reckoning, reckoning but it was definitely a racial rousing. America seemed willing to at least adjust the narrative about the country, how it was born and how it grew, who belong and to whom a debt is due. But to many, this was the greatest of threats. The ability and authority to create narrative or to change or to challenge it is an awesome power. Some may call it a soft power, but I say soft like the cloud that unleashes the tornado. You can read the rest of my column at nytimes.com, but joining me now to discuss the American narrative the Republicans are selling voters is the president and CEO of the NAACP, Derek Johnson. Mr. Johnson, thank you for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Good evening. So they had this fascinating article in Politico today uh, about how the Republicans are using this as a strategy this idea of building a narrative around uh, a kind of an erasure, a racial attack on them by a two woke left, and that every candidate so far who might even be looking at a presidential run in 2024 is literally repeating this line verbatim: "America is not a racist country." Yeah, you know, what, how what do you I take that? Yeah, what, what, I, what I appreciate about how you're framing this is rooted in a history that we've seen before. That period we call redemption was real, and it was about narrative change and control. And it was also about politics, who controlled the tax dollars, who gets taxed, who's not taxed, and how those tax dollars are spent, who are legitimate citizens and who are not uh, legitimate in terms of their citizenship. And the critical race theory concept is a strategy to recruit individuals to work, to run for office locally, school board races, in preparation of the 2022 election. We've seen this play in 1994 with Newt Gingrich, Contract on America. We've seen this play before time after time, 
using the tool of race and emotion to gin up a type of energy to turn out to vote. And unfortunately, many of the individuals they are pursuing to get out to vote, they will be voting against their own interests. Working class whites, the most brainwashed population in this country, are working class whites because they, they bought into this myth of supremacy when, in fact, they are struggling under the same vices as the rest of America. So, so we have this, this idea of they're creating a narrative around race that is not true. But now you see this is operating in many different spheres, right? It is also operational in the sphere of the election was, was, not, uh, was won by Trump and lost by Biden, and that, that they're creating an entire narrative around uh, retaking the election. They've created an entire other narrative around the, you know, connected to that, that the, the, the election was so flawed that we have, to in, we have to engage in all of these suppressive efforts to make sure that we redeem the vote because it is so yeah, far lost and sullied. Yeah, I mean, this is akin to the strategy uh, utilized during uh, the rise of Reagan that you, you, you create a space where people lose, co lose confidence in government and systems if, if the outcome of those systems and government uh, don't reflect a one's perspective of who they are and their standing in society. And that's what we're up against. This cultural war is a war of narratives. The whole concept of the Confederacy, for example, is a, a misnomer. The symbol used was a the battle flag of Northern Virginia, not the Confederate flag, but yet it was resurrected uh, and really brandished in the 30s and the 40s, used as a symbol of terrorism. The concept of the Confederacy and, and the erective of monuments, we've seen the acceleration of that in the 30s and 40s and in the 50s, particularly after the decision around Brown versus Board of Education. Much of the narrative control that, that I mean, the narrative battle that we are in are, are battles we've seen in the past. I live in Mississippi. I, I understand very clearly how this unfolds. The most powerful tools in the South and now the country are the narratives of race, religion, and region, creating otherness in ways in which you can control and direct the energies of voters to get an outcome that you're pursuing. What's unfortunate about this, it is the most high wealth individuals in this country who are seeking to subvert democracy so they can maintain and continue to accu accumulate wealth by exploiting people and property. I think, I think you're absolutely right there. I mean, it, but, but I think Republicans have tapped into something. You yes. know, there, there is nothing that Americans, a, a lot of white Americans hate more than the idea of taking away the grandeur that they grew up with, their concept of a, of a washed and bleached American history where people are happy and there is great achievement and there is valor and there is adventure uh, and there is creation of industry and invention, right? Uh, anything that yeah. sullies that is an attack on them and an attack on their vision of the country. You are, by definition, un-American in this, in this paradigm if you challenge their view of the country. Uh, Republicans recognize this impulse in, their, in voters. Do you think this will be a successful tactic? It, it could be. I mean, you know, their vision of America is 1950. Our vision of America is something that's diverse, inclusive, and, and look towards uh, 2030. Their tactics here is, how do we suppress the votes? Because elections are won by inches, not miles. So what we're looking at in Texas, uh, and thank God the uh, members of the Democratic Party was willing to take that courageous act and get out of the state so they would not have a quorum. That is about suppressing the votes and, and pulling off one, two, three percent of the vote because Texas is a 800-pound gorilla. That's why the NACP, we're supporting the members of the Texas delegation because we have a moral obligation to support this democracy. We have a future opportunity to be more inclusive. And if we are able to continue to push forward, we will see a much more diverse, inclusive society. But white America will fight at all costs. If we were not being successful at what we were doing, we would not see the, the, the aggressive nature by which they have approached elections and the big lie to try to redevelop a narrative 
increase a level of enthusiasm, and they were willing, they are willing to go so far as to c commit treason through that insurrectionist act we seen on January 6th. So let, let me ask you about that, you know, what's happening, what you guys are engaged in in Texas, trying to fight those voter suppression laws. There are voter suppression laws all across the country uh, uh, at this point, either already enacted, I think there are 30, at least 30 now, already enacted in something like 18 states. Other states are considering them. The, these legislatures are still in session, so we could see even more uh, regressive laws. These laws stay on the books unless they are repealed or struck down by the court. This is it. Right? Uh, no, no it's, and... it, it's not. It's not. It, the, our goal here with Texas is to continue to wave the flag to this administration and to the Senate. You must act. You must act now. The lack of urgency the White House is pla placing on right. this, the lack of urgency what? the majority in the Senate is placing on this is appalling, to say the least. They have the ability right now. Removing it, any, that's, that's what I was getting to. Uh, uh, that's what I was... I, I was getting to that, you know, it, unless Congress does something, it's on the books, right? You know, That's right. And so here, here's the problem with, with, the, with the narrative. The narrative is only gang strength. If these things are allowed to get onto the books and stay there and, 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 and Republicans in other states can look at these laws and say, Congress didn't pass anything to block it. The states didn't strike them down. We're to go. Not, what That's stops the rest of the states? That's right. That's our fight. That's from our fight. From jumping in and doing the exact is, same thing. Uh, right. Yeah, the, the, our fight now is a, a federal fight. The Senate must act. The administration must put their muscle behind getting the votes necessary to pass legislation to protect our votes to turn back the clock of what we've seen over the last three months. No member in the Senate Their will be in position where they are it, but for the black vote. Now the black community said, you must protect our vote, our interests, so that we all can look towards a future that both more inclusive as opposed to past, the past that we know is damaged. Derek Johnson, president and CEO of the NAACP. Thank you so much for your time, sir.